Do you want to know more about gnomes in Dungeons and Dragons? Of course you do. So let's go over the basics of this smaller race. Before that though, remember if you appreciate this video, hit that thumbs up to help these videos reach more people. But let's talk gnomes. Gnomes are small humanoids, mostly known for their curiosity, engineer skills and sense of humor. Gnomes are, as a whole, overlooked by the other races as they aren't really known to have accomplished great deeds and tend to keep to themselves quite a lot. The fact that they are overlooked is something that they don't mind at all, really. To quote a gnome, it's not so much that we like keeping secrets as that we hate being discovered. We prefer to live our lives beneath notice, because when we're noticed, it's usually much bigger and much meaner creatures that notice us. With their 90 centimeters till 1.2 meters in height, they stand just slightly taller than the halfling, and with a weight between 18 and 20 kilograms, slightly heavier. An exception is to be made for the forest gnomes, however, who are smaller and weigh less. While halflings are said to resemble smaller humans, gnomes are said to look like small elves due to their pointy ears and high cheekbones. A more abstract view, however, would compare them to the dwarves because of their tendency to grow out their beards and live underground. They do, however, look a bit more feral, with a wild bush of hair that tends to grow in every direction. Gnomes have a skin color that ranges from reddish to earthy brown or different shades of grey, though the exact hue is mostly dependent on the ethnic origin. Their hair varies wildly in color, from the more natural colors like blonde and brown to more exotic colors like white, orange and even green. Gnomish eye colors know the different natural hues, though for the gnomes native to the Feywild, their eyes can be glittering black or blue. Now, gnomes are an intelligent and naturally curious race. While they lack the ambition of the other races, their creativity fuels their ingenuity. This said though, most gnomes are content just living a simple life, acquiring knowledge only as a hobby. Some, however, do love to explore lost ruins, delve into the depths of the world and conduct dangerous research to sate their thirst for knowledge, unfortunately leading to the untimely death of some. The gnomes that feel drawn to adventure mostly do so because of a desire to see the world as opposed to make a name or get riches. Gifted with a natural wit and joviality, gnomes prefer to overcome obstacles through their cunning and their wits rather than sword and fist. It is this curiosity, wit and jovial nature that makes gnomes entertaining party members. Just like elves, gnomes' hearing is better than regular humans, and they are capable of seeing in low light conditions as well. They are also long-lived, comparable to elven races. Reaching adulthood at around 40 years old, they can still live up to 3 centuries, and even 5 centuries isn't unheard of. Unlike elves, however, gnomes do show a greater degree of aging. As they grow older, their hair starts to grey and their skin begins to wrinkle. This also means that an old-looking gnome may just surprise you with how fit they still are, as even older gnomes are known to retain an extraordinary vitality. Another thing they have in common with elves is their affinity for magic, particularly their grasp of the arcane. Gnomes possess the innate ability to cast certain cantrips and for example the spell Mage Hand. They're also naturally adept at stealth and illusion. This makes it so they are well suited to train as bards, sorcerers, warlocks or wizards. Stories say that the first gnome gods were born from gems deep within the ground that became exposed to the air. The first of them being Garl Glittergold. Garl then found similar gems and breathed life into them, creating the gnomes which he immediately followed up with a joke. This is said to be the reason for the gnomes craftiness and mischief. Gnomish culture varied greatly depending on religion and ethnicity, though a few traits were valued among most gnomes, for example, the ability to avoid trouble and stay out of the way of others. It speaks for itself then that the tales of gnomish heroes aren't of gnomes charging into battle, but more so tales of subtle tricksters. Gnome's culture was heavily based around their love for pranks, arts and longevity. Weddings, for example, lasted up to a week, even though they didn't view love the same way as humans. If their relationship started to go wrong, they would simply break up and view it as a prank played on them by Carl Glittergold. All gnomes picked up some form of art as well, or even several during their lifetime. Their homes are typically made in burrows, similarly to badgers or foxes. As such, they are fond of these creatures and are known to keep them as pets as well. There are even some gnomes who are able to speak with these creatures. Other languages often spoken by gnomes include common, gnomish, dwarvish, goblin and even yipyak. As a solitary people, gnomes are known to be on friendly standing with most elves and fae. Dwarves are also often counted as friends, maybe partly due to their shared physical and cultural similarities. Both of the races view goblins and giants as enemies and are known to work together against them. Now if you want to learn more of a rather tall race, feel free to check out my latest video on the Goliath and remember to hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate this video. Take care.